is happening. So it's just a spirit. Eh? New spirit of lust, you leave her. Eh? to learn to live from your heart. Make decision from heart. Whatever you do, do from heart. We have not learned to do that as Christians. Whatever we do, whatever we say, it must be from your heart. We have to learn to live from your heart. Tell your neighbor, you have to learn yes, yes. to live from your heart. Yes, it becomes difficult when your heart is not right. How then do I live from my heart if my heart is not right? So the question is, what is in your heart? Tell your neighbor, what is in your heart is what matters. So God wants to live in your heart. He wants to live there. But there are things in your heart that are actually stopping God from living in there. I have learned how simple it is to be close to God. The issue is what is in your heart. If I ask you now, you will say, ah, Jesus is there. How do you know? Because the Bible says so. But what is the reality? Yes, it's supposed to be that way. Jesus is supposed to be there. The Bible says, your body is the temple. So what I know about temple is that there are temples that are empty right now. Just because you are a temple does not mean that Jesus is in What is in your heart right now is the reason why God would not want to live in that temple. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. This is a scripture that is written for every child of God. I'm not addressing people who are not Christians. I'm addressing Christians. This scripture is written to every child of God. This is John. Let's read. Do not love this world. Yes. Nor the things it offers you. Mm -hmm. For when you love the world, mm -hmm. you do not have the love of the Father in you. You do not have the love of the Father in your heart. If you love the world and what is in the world. That means you do not have God in your heart. Can you see this? One of the students of uh, Paul, the apostle, loved the world. And uh, when you continue to read, you will see Paul removing him from the team. And handing him over to the devil. Because the Bible says he loved the world. Meaning the love of God diminished. He stopped loving God and started loving the world. And gradually, gradually, the presence of God disappeared in his heart. God was no longer there. Do you know you can be here and not be here? 
Just because God is here does not mean that the presence of God is here. Are you, are you hear what I'm saying? There's no way you can love God or be in love with God and at the same time be in love with the world. It's not possible. Everyone demands their own attention. How can God, who is jealous, allow you to love the world and love him at the same time? If you love the world, the love of God is not in your heart. Meaning God is not in your heart. That is what is going on in many Christians' lives. God is no longer there. God is no longer there. He once was there. He was there once, but he's no longer there. Ask your neighbor, is God still real in your heart? Is he still in your heart? There's no way you can love the world and love God at the same time. Many Christians today have fallen in love with the world instead of, or rather, fallen in love with Jesus Christ. Ask your neighbor, are you the one? Your heart, Bazalwan, must be filled with Christ. Your heart must be filled with Christ. So if your heart is filled with Christ, where's room for any other thing? Because if it's not filled, then it's easy for something else to come in and actually affect everything else. But if there's no room, whatever it is from the outside cannot enter inside because there's no room. Your heart must be filled. Tell anybody, your heart heart must be filled filled with Christ. Christ. Again. Your heart must be filled with Christ. Yes. It's very easy. You can know if Christ is in your heart or not. You can know. Because some of you say, but no, but I have Christ in me. You can know if Christ is in your heart, you can know. You can know if devil is in your heart. You can know. Because the Bible says, from the heart, the mouth speaks. So we know what is in their heart by what occupies and fills your mouth. What you always say, how you speak, we know who you represent or who is in your heart. By the things you say with your mouth. There are people when you are with them. Five minutes. There is no Jesus in their speech. It's fashion and hairstyles. Money. You are announcing. You are telling us. What is in your heart. By the things that are coming out of your mouth. It's very easy to know who is in your heart, whether God or devil. It's very easy. Because from the, from the heart, the mouth speaks. Tell anybody, from the heart, the mouth speaks. Again, from the heart, the mouth speaks. I'm not, I'm not against fashion and monies. And, no, 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 no. I'm talking about who is in your heart. Because today, you will see even as pastors, what is coming out of our mouths. Then it tells us who is in our hearts as pastors. Because if you are talking about money all the time, then it tells me you are full of the world. Yes, he's a pastor, anointed, but the mouth tells me he's worldly. Are you still listening to me? I'm not against money. I'm not against prosperity. But 
Sometimes we end up loving the world too much. And if we love the world too much, then God. Because there's no way you can have the world in your heart and have God at the same time. You know, as a father, to, to identify a true father, every father wants their own children to go to heaven. Most of these pastors are going to heaven, but their problem is that they are misleading. I want you to follow me. Most pastors are anointed, but in their teachings, You can hear a pastor that is worldly. That is, meaning that is full of the world. It's in the mouth. Money, 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 money. Prosperity, prosperity. Yes, we want to prosper. But there's first things first. God says to me this week, he says, Lang, do you know what I desire from you? I said, what? He said, I want, I just want to have affection. He said, I just want to sit and let's talk. Let's not talk about money and cars and prosperity. Let's just talk. Give me your heart, I'll give you my heart. Let's have affection. Amen. God is missing that. God is missing that because most of the time, every time we are in conversation with God, we are ever talking about the world, worldly things, instead of God, how are you? The Bible says David was the man after God's heart, not hands. Meaning he cared about how God feels about him. Affection. Affection. He feel it. That's why Nasimisha do any feel it. He affection. I say echo. Affection is no longer there. Aksaban Juan, Aksadal. You know, come. Married couples no longer play. Why? Affection is dead. So, Kurunyang is seeing We just talk about bread. When we wake up in the morning, the first thing is bread. Affection is what? Is dead. That's why, even with our relationship with God, affection is dead. God is just a provider. He's not a lover. Even in our prayers, we call him El Shaddai. El Elyon. These are things that he does. Nobody says, you are the lover of my soul. Affection. We call him with all these big names. But those names represent his hands. What he's able to do with his hands. His provision. His protection. But what about his heart? Affection is dead. Between us as children of God. And our father. You can know what is in your heart by the things you say with your mouth. Luke 6 verse 45. Luke 6 verse 45. It's very easy to know. It's very easy to know. Every time you sit down, you want to prepare something to teach. What comes into your head? Because the Bible says kingdom first, righteousness and kingdom. He says these monies will come. But our focus now is monies and then the kingdom later. Eh? You want me to preach prosperity? This is prosperity, this one. When you are right, when you are righteous, when you are holy, money comes to you. Amen. Success just comes to you. Because these are additions. These are additions. These are things that Matthew 6, 33 says. He says additions. They just come. 
They just come. You don't even need to pray for them. Your holiness attracts them to you. People just want to bless you. People just want to give you money. <sighs> Luke 6, verse 45. Verse 45. A good person produces good things. He says a good person produces. A good person produces. So that means the qualifying is pro- is good person. He says a good person produces. So the producer, the producer, the one who produces, then exposes what is in the heart by the production. He says a good person produces good things from where? From the treasury of a good heart. From the treasury of a good heart. Treasury of a good heart. Meaning what is in the heart comes out ultimately. Becomes a product, a finished product, a project. But that project starts from the heart. Are you with me, Bazolan? He says whatever that is coming out started in the heart. If it's good, that means it, it comes from the treasury of a good heart. So there's no way something good can come from a bad heart. There's no way a bad thing can come from a good heart. You remember my example? When I said, you people, you are looking at me, I'm pushing him. So you say, ah, this man is bad. No, before you say bad, wait for results. Wait for results. Look at this one. I pushed him. If you saw me when I pushed him, you would have said this man is bad. But the same week, two breakthroughs came upon him. Amen. But if you were looking at me when I was pushing him, you would have said he's bad. No, before you say bad, wait for the results. Because from the good heart, treasury of a good heart, I may do something that looks bad, but wait for the answer. Wait for the answer before you judge. Wait for the answer. Just like failure. Failure is not the opposite of success. It's part of success. There must be failure in your journey with God. You must somehow make 10 mistakes before you get to the... Failure is not the opposite of success. It's part of success. Success. 